Today we are by request having a brief tutorial on how to make a herring bone weave for all kinds of purposes. Your focal pendant on a necklace, this could be drop down parts of an earring. I started making a bracelet with these six millimeter white turquoise round beads and it's just a lovely, it catches the light it's interesting. It looks complicated, but yet is not. And as a beginner, I'm guaranteed that you can do this today. Supplies for today, 20 gauge wire as our base wire. Now I will say that something heavier would be better, but I don't have anything heavier that would fit the holes on any of my beads. I actually need to pick up some 19 or 18 gauge, but in a pinch, 20 gauge wire will work for this. Um, and then 24 gauge is what we're using to actually make the weave. Choosing your beads. The main thing that I find for choosing your beads is you want something that's got some thickness to it. Um, to so that the weave will stay positioned as you are working. This one was border not borderline getting too thin. You know, it would I really had to work to hold this around the edge of the bead. I wouldn't go any thinner than this. So that is the main key in choosing your bead for this project is something that's just got some thickness that is going to be able to be wrapped. What I'm going to show you today is totally customizable to whatever you're working with. If you're using a bigger bead or even a smaller bead, even as a rectangular bead that I showed you in a video last week where I used a long rectangular amazonite bead for on the paperclip chain necklace. We're going to cut about two, two and a half inches of our base wire. 20 gauge is what I have. I would like to have something thicker, but that's not what I have, but we can, we can make it work. It's not the end of the world. Although I think I'm going to have to get some 18 or 19 gauge, and I'm going to go ahead and get about a foot of this wrapping wire, just so that we're not worried about running out of wire. If all you have is 20 gauge, because it's a pretty common gauge wire, um, and you want to use it, you can work harden it a little bit either with, if you have a nylon hammer, you can hammer it a good bit and make it a little uh, stronger, a little more sturdy for this base wire. This is what's gonna form the centerpiece here, this one that's running down the center of the bead. So just to make it a little more strong, you can um, nylon jaw pliers or a nylon hammer. Get your 20 gauge wire or whatever you're using for your base wire. Wrap the short tail around and hold that with your non-dominant hand. Take this long tail and then wrap over. This is the anchor wrap that will hold our wire to our base wire. Give it a little push in there. That will come a little easier once we get our bead on there. I do not put a bead on while I'm doing this because I don't want to mess with the bead and try to do the anchor wire at the same time. I'm using six millimeter white turquoise for this project. And this is where you can nestle that wire in there really nicely. Take your anchor wire and turn it perpendicular to yourself. This is the tip that you need to know. There is a slight, I mean, it's so minimal, but it's there. And you will see that minor, minimal little kink in your wire if you leave it there as you're doing your wraps. So take your nylon jaw pliers, or even if your fingers, if you have to, you have to do a little bit more if you're using your fingers. I would definitely suggest some nylon jaw pliers. Now that our 24 gauge is anchored to our base wire, we're going to turn our work perpendicular to ourselves, grab our long tail and begin making our first wrap, bringing it above our base wire to the other side of the bead. I wrapped around our bead, holding the anchor wire and the bead like this in between your fingers. Bring it nice and snug. I am pressing in with this hand, pressing in against the bead so it is snug as possible. Over, under, 
pulling nice and snug. And then back over again, pulling the wire away from me. Snuggling it down in there really well. I'm gonna go, there's another slight, and I want that out of there. I don't wanna see it in my wrappings. Turn your wire, your base wire, perpendicular to yourself so we can do this next wrap. I'm still holding nice and tightly between these three fingers, holding on to the bead. Let me, as I'm getting there, let me go ahead and trim that, that piece and give it a little press down. Oops. Snuggling. You can also, if you, if you don't have fingernails or anything like that, or it hurts or something like that, you can take your pliers and mimic fingernails and just press down that way. All right, take this long tail, hold it securely and wrap around. Something that I do is that I'll kind of wrap it up and slide it down the bead so that it comes right up against the previous wrap. I brought it over top. Now it's underneath and I'm gonna do another wrap over and away from me. You will always end up with the same, the wire going away from you. I want to give a little straightening out with that. Turn your wire. That's what you're doing the whole way is just turning and repeat, turning and repeat. When you bring this tail around to do the next wrap, where does it go? Well, it, we want to layer it right under the previous wrap. Hold it with your thumb and your finger. And remember, I kind of bring it up and slide it down pressing in I'm taking this hand and pressing in that way very firmly over under back over top again pulling away I'm doing it right now I, I do this with every almost about every single wrap to make sure it's nice and smooth turn your wire your base wire perpendicular to yourself and we're doing the same thing layer underneath your previous wrap Bring your wire over the base wire, press in towards the bead, under, over again, so that it's away from you. The same thing will happen. If you're ending up with this wire going anywhere but away from you, you've somewhere you've turned it the wrong way. No problem, we'll just start again. I can't tell you how many times I start again. <laughs> we learn from our mistakes. All right, our wire perpendicular to our cells. We're ready for our third wrap. Remember, wrapping underneath the previous layer, over, bringing down nice and firmly, under, back over again. Check in the bottom, making sure that looks nice and neat as well. You know, people that do sewing and all kinds of wonderful things that I can't do. They want the back looking just as nice as the front. So that's what we're gonna go for. Okay, turning our wire perpendicular to ourselves, taking that long tail. I've made a kink while I was talking. We will not go forward until it's out. All right, layering underneath that other layer. Bring the wire over top the foundational. Pull it in nice and tight under and then over again. I've got three on one side, three on the other. We're gonna do another all the way around. Turn your wire. Start wrapping. Over, bring your wire over, then under, then back over again. Turn your wire, layer underneath the previous one, wire over top, pulled in towards the bead, nice and snug, under and over again. And there we have it. Check in the bottom. Everything looks wonderful and I can sniff this. Left, of, left with a pretty good amount, but I don't like messing with um, tiny leftovers. 
and I can use this for something else. I have a bin of pieces that <laughs> I could use again for something else. So there we have it. And I will, as we see on this bracelet, trim down the sides to about a quarter of an inch. Oh, excuse me, a centimeter. And then rolled in and make a loop. I used the same technique that I showed you in a previous video about how to make the easiest loop ever. That's how I made these loops for this bracelet. So I will put something there on the screen that you can click on if you'd like to learn how to make one of the easiest loops ever. I'll be glad to show that to you. I've had a wonderful time today as always. Love having you around and I so look forward to seeing you in the next video.